Welcome to another episode of CBPR Global High T video series with me, Ghazi Hassan, Senior Research Associate Center for Strategic Studies. Today, I will discuss COVID related developments in the realm of geopolitics, global economy, its implications on the liberal international order, and the oil production. The international system is a sphere of anarchy where self help, security dilemma, conflict are order of the day. With the complex interdependence as a result of globalization, the crisis, events, or for that matter, the outbreak of a deadly virus from one part of the world can severely affect the other parts in no time. The rise of liberal international world order as a result of globalization since the last 20th century has been a major factor in the free movement of people across the borders for the purpose of global supply chains, in international finance, flow of money, uh, employment, and most importantly, the tourism. The recent outbreak of the deadly coronavirus in the capital city of Wuhan of China's Hubei province is a perfect example of how crisis in one part of the globe is affecting whole world and has the potential to threaten the geopolitics, global economy, as well as the international world order. The virus is taking a toll on human lives, killing more than 17,000 people in Italy, 81,000 globally and approximately 1.4 million confirmed cases as we speak. The virus has infected people in over 200 countries and territories across the globe. In the wake of this outbreak, significant changes are happening in the international political system. Oil prices are falling, stock market is down, trade has taken a hit, tourism industry across the globe has suffered the most. This is changing the landscape of the international politics, which in recent times has seen a rise of populism, unilateralism, isolationism, and the protectionism. This particular crisis is unprecedented and has potential to change the global order once for all. Even if this outbreak is stopped successfully in the rest of the world, its impact on the global economy will be huge. Wuhan, which is considered as the Silicon Valley of China, is a Chinese industrial heartland located in the middle of the country, bounded by Beijing, Tianjin, Macau, Shanghai, uh, Hong Kong, and Chengdu. The capital city is a hub of several crucial economic zones with more than 300 of the world's top 500 companies which are settled there. For instance, because of the lockdown in these areas, Airbus has stopped its production line in Tianjin as, a, as travel restrictions were imposed by China. The closure of the plant, which builds approximately six A320 air, aircraft parts, per month will affect the manufacturer's output. Other manufacturers like Toyota, General Motors, and the Volkswagen have also ceased their production. This impact on the manufacturing output is not only confined to China, but has also engulfed most of the countries dependent upon the Chinese imports. The South Korean car manufacturer, uh, Hyundai, has also halted its production lines because of the disruption on the supply side. The national borders, as a result of this crisis, are becoming less porous in terms of the business and the trade transactions and for the movement of people when compared to the last 30 years of globalization. However, this trend of strengthening and shutting down of the national borders was already manifested in many countries. The rise in populism, protectionism, uh, coupled with the nationalism and the anti-refugee sentiments in the European countries, coupled with the America first policy of the Trump administration and the UK's Brexit has encouraged the growing disparity. In future, it may be said that the coronavirus delivered the death blow to the liberal international order and to the half century of the globalization and to an era of interdependent. The challenge at hand is to take the liberal international world order in a direction where it weakens the burden on globalization. This will require a stronger international cooperation driven by shared common interests. The explosion of this deadly virus has created an unprecedented and extraordinary situation where it is crucial to create a mechanism to respond to, this, to such events through an effective international cooperation. International cooperation is needed to make sure that the urgency of the public health emergency is given priority. But since the long-term effects of this outbreak has not been clear, 
with no assessment of common response various developments are happening in the international oil market with the possible flare up of the energy war between saudi arabia and russia thus giving yet another blow to the world order in the testing times in order to contain the spread of the virus the demand for fuel as a result of the lockdown has reduced to a considerable level with prices falling to their lowest in 18 years dropping below 25 dollar a barrel The forecast for global oil demand is projected to show a decrease of 0.6% or 600,000 barrels of oil per day. The estimates show that the total demand in 2019 was approximately 99.8 million barrels of oil per day, which in which is now projected to decline to 99.2 million barrels of oil per day in 2020. This downgrade compared to the previous estimates takes into account the quarantine lockdown in various countries and a massive cancellation of the flights by the airlines and the travel ban by various governments while demand for the road fuel will stay largely flat the demand in 2019 was estimated to have reached 49.7 million barrels per day Prior to the coronavirus it was expected that the demand segment to grow to 50.3 million barrels per day in 2020 but now it seems reaching only about 49.8 million barrels per day the reduction cost will occur due to the reduced traffic in the first half of the 2020 among the various fuel sectors jet fuel will be hit the hardest as coronavirus outbreak spreads across the globe and countries impose travel restrictions with airline continue to cancel thousands of flights the global air traffic will fall approximately by 16% this year compared to the levels in 2019 which stood at around 190000 flights per day to put the reduction into the context pre corona virus estimate was for an average of 200000 flights per day this year many distressed airlines will face heavy cost cuts and many non profitable routes are likely to be closed the latest engagement that we witnessed such as the meeting of the sark leaders g20 leaders were not only a timely intervention at a regional and an international level towards the combating the viral outbreak but also has given an opportunity to respond collectively and effectively to contain this outbreak the collective action of all the countries is the need of the hour to clear barriers in the development manufacture and equitable distribution of vaccine that can counter this deadly pandemic This was all from this segment of Global High Tea video series. Follow the hashtag CBPR Global High Tea for all the updates and to see our previous videos. If you like this video, please hit like, comment, and share. Thank you.